So this plywood that I just pulled out of my bin down there is what I'm going to be making the drawer fronts from. Um, I took the time yesterday after I finished putting the drawers in to make a very carefully measured diagram showing all the sizes of the 10 drawer fronts that I need. And I'm going to get everything from this single sheet. Now, looking at the sheet, I can see that there are some problems. In particular, there's an area where there's some darker colored wood showing through. This is actually the back side of the sheet. I did that in the rest of the kitchen because typically the back side of the sheet has a veneer layer that's less choice, I guess you could say, but it shows more character. So I like that dark wood showing through. I also like these flecks over here. Except on the end over here, I've got a line that shows some compression grain. Very much the same thing up at the other end. So I'll be taking my drawers from more or less the center of this sheet. So the first step is to do a rough layout. And then I can use my straight edge guy with the circular saw to make the initial cuts. And for this, it's going to be a cut on the end to get rid of that compression grain. And then I'll be making a cut pretty much right across the middle. And that'll give me the two bigger drawer fronts that section and then the sock is actually small enough that I can do the rest of the cutting on the table saw. I took about 10 inches off the bottom of each piece. That'll be the bottom of the uh, drawer fronts, like the very bottom of the bottom ones. <laughs> so that'll be my guide so that the grain will line up. You, that's very important, okay? So next I need to cut this piece right here into the eight drawer fronts that go on the end. I'm gonna leave the two bigger ones where they are for right now, I'll work on these. And I'm gonna do the bank of four that's on the far left first, and the total width of those is 16 and a half. So I'm gonna set my fence to 16 and 7 16 and what that'll do is it'll give me that space for the edge banding that I'm gonna iron on after. And the width of the middle bank of drawers is 18 and eight, and that's the piece that's left over from that cut I just made, and I just need to trim a small amount off the edge. Now with that cut made, I can start cutting out the individual drawer fronts, starting with the bottom. And this one's eight and five eighths, so I'm setting this saw to eight and nine sixteenths to give me that space for the edge banding. And both of these banks are the same as far as the height of the drawers goes. So I'm cutting the other one also. And then after that, I'll reset the saw to eight inches for the next drawer front up and cut both of them again, and so on and so forth until I have them all done all eight of them. And then of course back to the big ones. And the bottom one is 13 and 7 eighths inches tall. And the top one is 16 inches, so it's actually taller than the bottom one. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to look. It might look a little bit odd, but I guess I'll see after it's put in. I've got my crosscut sled put on a table saw here just to trim off the ends of these bigger drawer fronts. The cuts that I have here now are from the circular saw, and even though they're not that bad, there's no chip out or anything, they can be improved, so I'm just going to trim a little bit off. 
and I left these slightly longer than they need to be for that reason. Now that I have all the panels cut out to the right size, I can start edge banding it. I'm going to be using iron-on edge banding. And to do that, I've taken out my iron and heated it up. And I did a separate video showing how I do this before that goes into a lot more detail. But basically what I'm doing is I'm heating up the edge banding, putting a lot of pressure on with the iron. Then I take a block of wood to put even more pressure on. And then I can trim off the excess. And to do that trimming, I just use a plain blade that I'm holding freehand. There are other ways to do this, like a router with a flush trim bit, but I find that it gets gummed up pretty quick. And you can also get those cutters, but I haven't had much luck with those. It's worth mentioning that I'm not edge banding the bottom edge of the drawer fronts. There are a couple of reasons for that. First is that I don't know that I have enough edge banding to do everything on the bottom as well. And then being the bottom, you don't see it. Like there's no compromise in the durability. Once the plywood, the edge of the plywood gets finished with clear polyurethane, it's just as durable as the edge banding itself. I should mention that people look down on edge banding as something that peels off. I've never had a failure. I put on miles of this stuff and I've never had any peel off. You have to be careful when you're putting it on. Make sure you get it hot enough. Make sure you press it in hard enough. You know, the glue has to be melted for it to adhere to the edge. Also, the edge has to be clean. That's a big factor and smooth as well. If you stick to those uh, simple rules, you won't have any problem with modern edge banding. Well, I got all the edge banding done and I did have enough. Uh, however, while I was edge banding the eight uh, for the two single banks, I noticed that I mixed up uh, the faces and actually the good side of the plywood is now facing outwards and the side that I wanted will be on the back. But you know what? It's not that big a deal. Still going to look good. So the next step is to do some sanding. I have my random orbit here with a 220 grit disc in. I'm just going to very lightly go over the whole thing with this. And this is mainly to get rid of any marks or dirt that might be there from, you know, it being in the big box store. And I'm being very careful not to overdo it. You don't want to burn through the thin veneer. After that, I'll do the edges that I banded and I'll slightly ease over the corners so that they're not so sharp. I was thinking about that second drawer front, the top one, that's 16 inches tall. And I decided that that's probably going to look too tall with the one beneath it. So what I did was I set my saw to 10 inches and I made a kerf cut. And what that'll do is it'll make it look like it's two drawer fronts, but in actual fact, it's just one since they're still connected. I got all the sanding done. Next thing I need to do, and probably I should have done this before the sanding actually, is I'm going to drill the holes for the handles. And to do that, I made this very simple jig. It's just a strip of plywood with another thin strip of plywood uh, nailed onto the edge. It hooks over the top and the end lines up with the end of the drawer over here. And I just drill those holes all the way through after marking them with the guide. And then because I need it slightly countersunk on the back for the head of the screw so that it won't hit the front of the drawer, I drilled this other hole, this 3 8 inch hole, and I'm going to use that to guide my drill as I drill in just a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch. Now for these two bigger ones, I'm not going to make a jig, I'm going to lay it up by hand. The handle on these is longer, so the way I do that is I just line the hole where the screw is, center it on the end of the door, and then I measure over from the other end to the center of the second hole, and then I divide that by two, and that gives me my spacing from the end. With that done, all the drawers are finished, and I can bring them outdoors, where I'm going to spray on three coats of a water-based polyurethane. I'm going to spray on the first coat, 
let that dry for about a half an hour and then lightly sand it before spraying on the second coat. And then I'll do exactly the same thing before I spray on the third coat, give it a light sanding. And after three coats, I'm left with a perfectly smooth finish. I let the finish on the drawers dry overnight and then I installed them the next day. I didn't film any of that, but I took a couple of pictures. One change that I did make though is I went back to that too tall drawer underneath the sink and instead of the kerf cut, because I didn't think that looked right, I just finished the cut all the way through and then I edge banded the top of the lower section and then I used biscuits to join it back together. And that made it look more like two actual drawer fronts rather than one bigger one with a saw cut down the middle. Overall, I'm very pleased with the way these came out. They match the ones that I already did perfectly and more importantly, finish off the cabinet so that they're actually done.